I loved the last Vision motherboards Gigabyte had produced last year. I mean, they're powerful, uh, feature-rich, resilient, uh, and, and made for content creators of all kinds. There's simply not enough of those on the market, in my opinion. So picture my excitement when I saw that Gigabyte had released its replacement, the Iro. Uh, lineup of motherboards. On one hand, we have a more budget-friendly G model, and on the other, a more premium so-called D model. Both of which are deliciously focused on pure power delivery and everything else, trying to keep it from melting your chassis. Today, we are reviewing the Z690 Aero G, the more budget-friendly of the two. But don't be fooled by the word budget, because this thing is bringing in some heavy argument to its purchase. The really cool thing about this kind of motherboard is that manufacturers engineered the heck out of it and you can feel it at every turn. It is supposed to be one of the most reliable, fail-safe motherboard out there, which when you see how much power this thing can handle, is not a given. Now, starting with the obvious. We are dealing with a six-layered PCB ATX motherboard, exactly what I expected in order to support the more demanding PCIe 4 and PCIe 5 signaling, whilst providing a better VRM heat dissipation and a better audio static isolation. So fundamental one, check. Now design-wise, the Aero stays very close to its predecessor with an overall clean white theme. We have a very precise finish on all surfaces and edges, and despite going after a more production-focused clientele, Gigabyte did care about its overall aesthetic, which I find pleasing and expensive. A very good feel of robustness overall. RGB-wise, well, Gigabyte took the sobriety approach. No embedded RGB, but instead four RGB connectors, two of which are addressable. Now, CPU socket-wise, we have the LGA1700 CPU socket, able to support both 12th and incoming 13th generation of Intel Core processors, both introducing the DDR5 RAM support and PCIe 5.0 standard, which will be particularly beneficial to content and media creators and obviously was a focus for this board. Now, VRM-wise, we have 1970 amps power stages from on semi organized in a 17 plus 2 direct faces configuration. That is, I mean, let me remove my glasses for this, almost 1200 amps of CPU-centric power. Obviously, more than you'll ever need to operate an even severely overclock any processor of the 12th or 13th generation of Intel Core processor. This is not unprecedented, it's completely berserk. In addition, we have a rather premium two-stage heat pipe link uh, heatsink, which does feature an extended design on its upper block. And that is a particularly good point because um, they're correcting what I thought was a design flaw in my review of its predecessor, the Z590 Vision D, which had this plastic uh, thing covering a, a, a rather small, you know, VRM block, and which showed in temperature. So that is definitely a step in the right direction. Now, to write another wrong I've spotted on last year edition, we do have finally a double contact design offering thermal padded contact to both chokes and power stages. Now, as a result, temps are much much better than seen on last year model. With a tortured and overclocked i7-12700K, the VRM main and side block mostly remain below 50 degrees Celsius, which is frankly breathtaking. <gasps> so without any retenue, I'm giving a gigantic VRM and cooling kudos to Gigabyte for having correcting all the points I had noticed uh, last year and removing my, uh, how to call this, my chagrin. Now, as CPU goes, I can easily see the Aero 6 uh, Z690G handling anything ranging from i7 to i9K processors. Now, memory-wise, the Z690 Aero G supports up to 128GB of DDR5 RAM in a dual-channel configuration, overclockable up to a whopping 6000MHz. Obviously, a big 
upgrade incentive coming from any previous chipset. Now, worth noting, DDR5 memory fares exceptionally well in memory intensive tasks as used in production environment and can provide up to 50% more memory bandwidth than seen on its DDR4 predecessor. The only issue here is that this particular motherboard will not be able to support your older DDR4 RAM, even though uh, you do have a DDR4 enabled um, version of this Z690 ROG. I'm not sure it's a great um, um, option because if you're gonna go on production level you know, computing, you're gonna really want DDR5 memory. But yeah, you're not gonna be able to use all DDR4 RAM sticks or you're gonna break something because they simply are different slots models to deal with. Now, staying in the memory, our Z690 ROG supports up to four M.2 solid state drive, all of which are PCIe 4.0 enabled against only three on its previous Z590 iteration. Now that is an obscene amount of storage bandwidth, which allows you an unprecedented level of, uh, of data access, especially when you know that you can configure all of these sticks in the red 0, 1, and 5 configuration. Now, obviously, your M.2 solid state drive sticks will get really hot really quickly, but thankfully, Gigabyte made sure to equip our sticks with large, thick, and thermal padded heat shields. Now, I did have some doubts when I saw three M.2 solid state drives side by side cooled by one large heat plate, but after some thermal testing, they remain cool at all time, keeping our sticks away from any thermal throttling. So again, a very well-deserved storage kudos to our Gigabyte for this. But because I am picky, I am sad not to see any screwless locking mechanism as seen on both MSI and ASUS motherboard. So there is definitely some marginal room for improvement here. Now, as usual, let's quickly note the presence of six SATA 3.0 ports able to swap data to that slow, slow, but reliable six gigabit per second. Nothing new here. Now, chipset wise, cause that is mostly why we are here. We got Intel's first PCIe 4.0 native supported chipset. It has more bandwidth, more lanes, more USBs than its predecessor, but most noticeably the Z690 chipset manages to deliver PCIe 4.0 standard bandwidth levels on a very cool and cold 6 watts heat footprint, all of what AMD failed at delivering with its X570 motherboards and the presence of sometimes noisy chipset fans. In comparison, the Z690 heat shield is much smaller in area, costs less and does a great job at keeping the chipset below 45 degrees Celsius at all time, which is where you want it to be for a long board lifespan. In short, and as uh, uh, in all Z690 reviewed motherboard, I'll say that Z6, the Z690 chipset finally um, um, brings to maturity the PCIe 4.0 standard and makes it much more usable and, and uh, common in uh, today's computing market. Now, PCIe expansion-wise, we got three 16-lane slot PCIe exports with different number of lanes. As usual, only the closest one to your CPU has 16 PCIe lanes, therefore this is where you'd want your GPU for optimal performances, hence the metallic reinforcements. In addition, and for the very first time ever, it operates at PCIe 5.0 standard, meaning it can swap up to an insane, crazy, ludicrous 64 gigabyte per second, dwarfing the two remaining naked 16 slots, which operates only four lanes at PCIe 3.0 standard, meaning four gigabyte per second only each. Now, obviously this is a single GPU motherboard, which um, in, in view of what it does and its cost is acceptable. I know that when you look at production motherboard, you expect more than a single GPU support, but that's why you have the more expensive premium Aria or Aero, Aero D version of this motherboard, which will allow you this kind of support. And frankly talking, the kind of video cards we have on the market right now produce so much more power than the previous generations. And it's gonna, it's gonna take really a certain kind of projects to necessitate uh, a dual or triple GPU configurations, which are rarer and rarer and rarer. 
every day. So uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't see it as a limiting um, variable uh, as far as production goes. Now I do need to note that having PCIe 5.0 standard is a great future proofing feature, but nothing you will benefit from uh, for at least three to four years since current generation video card um, do not go beyond PCIe 3.0 standard in terms of bandwidth output and only the brand new next month's uh, NVIDIA next generation video cards will be able to eat within the PCIe 4.0 you know, territory bandwidth level. So um, it's great for marketing and future proofing, but as usual, that's about it for now. But more importantly, let's move to our back IO, which does feature a padded integrated backplate, fully expected at this price range. And starting from the left, we have two second generation USB plugs, a dual band Wi-Fi 6E adapter. I am not sure I love the fact that Gigabyte went for an M.0 slot Wi-Fi adapter and placed it right beneath an M.2 solid state drive stick and might create some heat bleeding on our M.2 solid state drive stick. Next, we have four USB third generation, upgraded HDMI, and that thing right here is not a display output, but a display input. Simply plug it into your video card output and the video signal is redirected to our type C right here at DP 1.2 standard or 4K at 60 frames per second. But most importantly, thanks to Gigabyte Vision Link feature, it can power and transfer the video signal to a drawing tablet all in one single cable. And obviously that is very specific, but a major plus for creators who use drawing uh, tablets and need, uh, you know, these kind of options. So yeah, great creative kudos for Gigabyte, I guess, for this one. Next, we have four USB 3.2 generation with 10 gigabit per second output, including a Type-C, and our i2025 2.5 gigabit LAN from Intel. And worth noting, this is a step three revision, um, which means no more networking bug as seen on step one and step two revisions. And finally, our eight channel brand new ALC 4080 codec from Realtek, which in a sense sounds and records exactly like its predecessor, the ALC 1220 which is good news since it means a top of the industry codec delivering excellent results both in playing and recording setups. Now overall and when you compare it to its Z590 Vision predecessor, the current Aero Z6, Z690G um, back IO received a serious upgrade, both in terms of connectivity and bandwidth output. But most importantly, I do like the fact that we have the Vision Link feature, which really differentiates this motherboard on the creative segment and really puts it ahead of the competition in that aspect. So yes, a very easy uh, back IO kudos to Gigabyte. For this. Now, front panel connector wise, nothing new here. We have a couple of second generation USB connectors for your monitoring. One 5 gigabit front panel connectors are more premium and loyal 10 gigabit front panel type C. And finally, a Thunderbolt 4 front panel connector. Nice creative touch here coming from Gigabyte. Now, cooling wise, we got eight deliciously hybrid connectors, meaning that they can all support either a PWM fan, a water pump, or even a flow sensor, giving this board a greater enthusiast agility and allowing about the most eccentric cooling solution you can ever imagine. And obviously I have imagination. So big, big agility, enthusiastness, cooling kudos to Gigabyte for this, and I need to give a break to my fingers because it starts to really hurt. Troubleshooting wise, we have our usual easy debugger, which will guide us through the main booting stages of our uh, boot. Now, the bare minimum in my view for a PCIe 4.0, PCIe 5.0 enabled motherboard, and um, I would not have minded to see uh, a Q code screen as seen on other uh, I have to say, uh, production-centric uh, motherboards. And I really think that the pricing would have allowed it because it's not that cheap of a budget motherboard. So yeah, definitely something that I hope Gigabyte will correct on the next iteration of this motherboard. Because I know you're listening to me, Gigabyte. I know I am the only one who really matters to you. And talking about bias. 
No, we did not talk about BIOS so far, but I have to give it to Gigabyte. It is slick looking, in tune with the overall white spirit of the Vision branding, but most importantly, it is rock solid stable. Very important on a board which builds its repute on being durable. The overclocking is easy and almost completely automated. And now I did have some issue as usual on decrypting uh, the font, but other than that, an absolute breathe to use. Now, in conclusion, at $260 before taxes, the Z690 IROG has a 50 bucks premium over its Z590 powered predecessor, which is not a little difference. And the question remains as usual, is it worth it? Well, let me start with the good points. It takes back all of the great features we've seen on its predecessor, the Z590 Vision G, and that's great. But most importantly, Gigabyte seems to have listened to the critics, which was iterated by your strolly last year. Makes me feel very important, especially on the VRM section and corrected every single issue reported in that regard. And as a result, despite having a drastically more powerful VRM, temps are absolutely exemplary and should be regarded as a gold standard by the competition, not thing less. Also, we do have the PCIe 5.0 and DDR5 introduction on the iRO, which obviously will be central for greater production yield. Now, the less good point or the only issue I really had is the fact that I found the troubleshooting solutions a little bit limited, no QR code, no power soldered button, something that again, when you have such a powerful VRM and so many PCIe bandwidths fighting on this motherboard would really be central in helping you getting out of trouble. But really, here I am being picky. Truth is, if you are a content creator or production focused at that price range, no brands or models will bring you this level of computing and agility. I mean, it's not the most fun motherboard there is in the world, God no. But if you are in for a production build, well, there is really nowhere else you money wants to be.